On the 10th of May, 1905, Robert Madgwick was born to a tram driver and a dressmaker in North Sydney, New South Wales. He would become a most remarkable man and educator who would influence the lives of generations. Growing up in a working class family, Bert attended public schools. Then in 1927, he commenced his career as a school teacher, initially at Nowra and later in Parks, New South Wales. It was here I learned that all people are not equal either in ability or motivation, but that each one was a worthy object of my endeavours because each one was interesting and had the right to be helped to achieve his or her potential. Madgwick later earned his PhD at Oxford before returning to lecture in economic analysis at the University of Sydney. He was sensitive to the changing nature of the world and his future within it. A colleague of Bert wrote of how with changes in economic theory in the 1930s, Madgwick reflected on his future. He realized that his knowledge of economics was becoming outdated. So in 1936, he switched to become a teacher of economic history. In 1940, as the nation again found itself embroiled in war, Madgwick became a colonel in the Australian Army and was appointed commander of the Australian Army's education program. He played a major role in the establishment of training schemes to help ex-service members undertake university education. His mission? To use education to help returning service people adapt and re-enter a world that had changed dramatically during the war. This mission to help people adapt to a changing world became the ethos upon which Madgwick would later establish the University of New England as its first Vice-Chancellor. His time in the Army and earlier experiences gave Bert a democratic perspective on adult education. The educator's job is to find out what people want, give it to them and go on from there. And never take the easy way and start with what I think they need. The argument about what is proper and what is not makes me very impatient. It wastes a great deal of time, which could be better used in the field of finding out what ordinary people are really like, the general sociology of their environments and what they want. From the outset, Bert recognised that UNE would only prosper if it educated people in ways that the established universities did not. Let us therefore accept as a challenge the differences that exist between ourselves and the other Australian universities. Let us work out a curriculum that is our own and not merely copied with minor modifications from the other universities. We teach not subjects or courses of study, but people. The danger is that the subject may become more important than the student. And to me, the student, not the subject, must become the central feature of the university. Madgwick's belief in supporting this student extended far beyond the campus. Other universities had tried and failed at distance education. Madgwick succeeded by rearranging the entire university to deliver distance education to the highest standard. I believe that a university education should be available in a democratic society to all who can benefit from it. And further, that we cannot as a nation waste our educational potential by leaving untrained and uneducated to the highest level men and women who are willing to subject themselves to the personal and intellectual discipline which is essential in external students. The driving purpose of UNE remains as strong as it was in 1955. Where there are no paths to learning, UNE builds them. Where there are barriers, UNE pulls them down. The university exists for its students. The 21st century is full of noise, through which UNE sends a clear, strong signal. No matter who you are or where you are, if you need to adapt yourself to this rapidly changing world, UNE offers the freedom to build the education you want and then support you all the way in attaining it. <laughs>